Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his entire households, the companions, and every single one of us. Ameen. Well, I have studied few tafsirs of the surah and realized that each and every one of us should understand and internalize this surah. We should ponder on its ayats within ourselves repeatedly whenever we recite it. I have tried my level best to summarize it in the shortest possible time frame so that more and more people may be benefited from it because most of us don't have enough time to study those big tafsir books or articles. This generation made us so busy that we fail to understand probably the best part of the Quran which really helps us building our relationship with our maker and maintain it in constant basis. Firstly, we need to understand why must we understand Surah Al-Fatiha, which is also known as the opener. We need to realize why it is the opening Surah of the Quran and our prayer. Why this Surah is also called as the Ummal Quran or the mother of the Quran. Ibn Jarir At-Tabari said that it was named so because the meaning of the entire Quran is precisely summarized within the Surah. In earlier times, if anything could concisely summarize or comprises the most important part of something, the Arabs used to name it as Um or Mother. We need to discover how can it contain the summary of the entire Quran, how the entire Quran may be captured just within the seven ayats of the small Surah. Finally, we need to understand why we need to repeat it again and again in each and every single rakah of our prayer or salah. Let's try to understand all of its seven ayats and remind them when we recite them in our every rakah. Trust me, the surah has changed my life and inshallah it has the potential to change your life as well. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem I seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan, the accursed one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in Surah An-Nahal, Ayat 98-99 that whenever we recite the Quran, we need to seek refuge from the accursed one, Shaitan, as Shaitan has no power over those who believe and put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan may divert our concentration or even mislead us in our understanding of the Quran if we fail to seek the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious or beneficent, the most ever merciful. Bismillah requires a following activity in order to complete itself. You can see that the sentence is incomplete, starting with the word in. So, we must complete it with the act followed by it. In this case, we are completing the word Bismillah with the recitation of the Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds or the universe. The word Alhamd contains both the expression of praise and thankfulness in the same word. This is an expression of gratitude and respect because he is the one worthy of all gratitude and respect. The expression of thankfulness is expressed for creating, protecting, blessing us, etc. With Lillahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned by his name, which is the best of all his names. A good use of this name in the introduction is done so that we can have a fresh start without confusing our God with any other God of other religions. Rabb means master, owner, ruler, cherisher and sustainer. We must realize that he is the ultimate authority maintaining everything and keeping them alive. Alameen refers to plural of world or worlds which means literally everything in existence. These include the earth, solar system, galaxies, Milky Way and beyond. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim The most gracious or beneficent, the most ever merciful. Ar-Rahman represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's expression of intense love, care, concern, 
and mercifulness towards us that is present right now. This means His mercy is immediately available, that is fulfilling our immediate need or concern. But once our immediate concern is taken care, what do we think of? Our future concerns, right? And this is captured in the next part. Ar-Rahim illustrates expression of intense love, care, concern and mercifulness that is permanent for always. This means His mercy will always be available that is fulfilling our future need or concern. Ibn Kathir Rahmatullah illustrate it as the Rahman is for this life that is now, present or immediate and the Rahim is for afterlife, is for the hereafter, the day of judgment and the afterlife which is more permanent. Maliki Yawmiddin The Master of the Day of Judgment Malik refers to the fact that he will be the king or owner. This indicates that he will have the ultimate and sole authority at that day. Yawmiddin This is the judgment or resurrection day that we as believers believe it to be coming for sure. Surah Al-Haqqa Ayat 18 mentions that when we will be resurrected, not a minute secret of ours will be hidden on that day. Each and every of our deeds will be kept in front of us with video footage and multiple resources will be there to testify whatever we have done in our life. Note that right after acknowledging Him as the most gracious and merciful, we are reminded that we will be resurrected with all the records of our activities in front of His Kingship on the Judgment Day. So, we should not take advantage of His mercy and do whatever we want. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Iyaka illustrates that our worship should be for Him alone and no one else, not even unintentionally, which may lead to the highest of all crime, that is shirk. Narbudu or worship includes believe, put our trust, obey and accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our waqil or disposer of our affairs. It actually encompasses all permissible righteous deeds. So, literally, we are willingly announcing our complete slavery to Him alone. After complete submission, we are asking for help and guidance from no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's always better to praise Him before asking for help. Note that here we are submitting ourselves accepting our slavery to Allah and then asking for His help and guidance as He is the creator and maintainer of everything and loves us the most. He should be the best consultant for us. So we will do whatever He tells us to do and avoid whatever He told us to stay away from. Another point to note is that the term us is used because Islam actually discourages individualism and solitariness. We can't just believe and follow the religion by our own, but we also have an obligation to convey the message to others and invite others to the truth of Islam. <laughs> Guide us to the path that is straight. Siratul means a path. We must not deviate from this path. So, we need guidance for navigation purpose to find the path and also require proper guidance to stay firm on it as shaitan has a constant fight with us to deviate us from this particular path. As Imam At-Tabari mentions, this is the clear path that has no branches. So, we must bear in mind that there is no D route or alternate route to the straight path. Mustaqim means straight, which indicates that it is a path which is righteous and leading straight up towards our God. Social aspect of Islam is illustrated once again by using the word us instead of me. So, we must call upon others while seeking the guidance. This has a benefit. If we can develop a group, the member of the group will help each other to avoid misguidance and also work as a reminder to each other. Note that we say guide us to the straight path, not guide us to paradise. So just sticking onto the path will qualify us to its end, that is paradise. 
So, earning paradise is actually made easy. We don't have to convert ourselves to a different personality altogether at once. And it doesn't matter if we join late. Whenever we join, we are considered to be on the path, so it's safe enough if we die in that state. The path of those you have bestowed your favors on them. These are the role models following whom will help us finding and sticking on to the path. Surah An Nisa, Ayat 69, has introduced these people. They are the prophets who teach, the steadfast affirmers of the truth, the truthful, the martyrs, shaheed, and the righteous who do good. Those on whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed His grace. How excellent these companions are! This is the straight path that we have just mentioned in the earlier ayat. Not of those who earned your anger on themselves and nor of those who went astray or lost. These are the people, those who know the truth of Islam but avoid implementing the truth thus earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people who are not ignorant to the truth. Example, Jews. But they deliberately get against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of arrogance. Please note that we also refer to another second group of loser. This group of people doesn't have true knowledge and as a result are wandering in misguidance, unable to find the correct path. These are the people who are ignorant to the truth, example, Christians. Some people think that knowledge of Islam is dangerous. The more we know, the more we will be held responsible. But this surah clarifies that the people who are misguided without proper knowledge are actually losers. So we must not be among those. Now, let us try to answer a few basic questions. Why is it so important? How can it summarize the entire Quran? Why do we repeat it in every prayer? It is important being the opening surah of the Quran and our Salah. It is also the first complete surah ever revealed. It summarizes as the entire Quran reflects to what the surah reflects, just elaborately. The surah praises Allah and the Quran does that as well. The Surah tells us to seek guidance. The Quran has the guidance. The Surah tells us to follow the winners, including the Prophets. The Quran tells their stories. The Surah tells us not to follow the losers. The Quran tells their stories as well as their fate. This also indicates not to become of a dull lean, lost without knowledge. So, read and understand the Quran to gain the knowledge and execute this final part of the surah. Very interestingly, the entire Quran starts from this last word, ad which indicates that we must not be ignorant and become among the loser. Rather, we must gain knowledge by starting to read and understand the Quran in order to save us. Believers need to keep asking for guidance day and night. This is a practice or exercise of our soul in order to find out the straight path in our day-to-day -day affairs and remain firm and persistent on it, the path leading towards our expected destination, that is, Jannah. Our Lord, let not our heart deviate from the truth after you have guided us and grant us mercy from you. Truly, you are the bestower. Surah Ali Imran, Ayat 8 the Hadith Qudsi reported by Muslim mentions Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that he heard the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have divided this surah between him and us equally. When we say all praise and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, Allah says my servant has praised me. When we say the all merciful, the most merciful, Allah says my servant has extolled me, means praised me enthusiastically. When we say, Master of the Day of Judgment, 
Allah says, My servant has glorified me. When we say, You alone we worship and you alone we seek for help, Allah says, This is between me and my servant and my servant shall have what he hath requested. When we say, Guide us to the straight path, the path of those on whom you have favored, and not of the path of those on whom you have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. Allah says, This is for my servant, and my servant shall have what he has asked for. Now, let us see how the surah is perfectly balanced from the middle. Starting from the beginning, Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. These are the reasons why we worship you alone and willingly accept our slavery as Allah is the only one worthy to be praised, honored and worshipped. Now, starting from the end, Ya Allah, guide us so that we do not become of those who have invoked your anger and of those who are astray or lost. These are the path of the losers. Guide us to the path of those upon whom you have bestowed your favor, means the path of the winners. Show us the straight path. Surat al-Mustaqim Now, Iyakanastain means, you alone we seek for help or guidance. This is actually the introduction of the ayats right after it. We need Allah's help and guidance to get to and remain in the straight path following the winners and not the losers. Thus, the seven ayats are found to be connected with perfect symmetry towards the middle. Thank you. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe this channel for more amazing contents. Thank you.